Good evening and thanks for joining us for the 10 o'clock news here on Q2. I'm Zoe Zandora. We start tonight in national news with just over three weeks left until the midterm elections. President Trump spoke with CBS's 60 Minutes, hinting at another White House shakeup. He also weighed in on the disappearance of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. CBS's Meg Oliver reports. President Trump tells 60 Minutes that more top aides could leave his administration. There's some people that I'm not happy with. I have some people that I'm not thrilled with, and I have other people that I'm beyond thrilled with. President Trump suggested Defense Secretary James Mattis could be part of the first group. So I think he's sort of a Democrat, if you want to know the truth. But General Mattis is a good guy. We get along very well. He may leave. I mean, at some point, Everybody leaves. Mr. Trump also discussed Jamal Khashoggi, the Washington Post journalist last seen entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. The president has promised severe punishment if Saudi Arabia is responsible for his disappearance, but isn't eager to upset an ally that's ordered $110 billion worth of U.S. weapons. What I don't want to do, Boeing, Lockheed, Raytheon, all these, I don't want to hurt jobs. I don't want to lose an order like that. And you know, there are other ways of uh, punishing. punishing, to use a word that's a pretty harsh word, but it's true. Republican Senator Marco Rubio says the allegation could devastate the U.S. relationship with Saudi Arabia. There is r news reports out there that there is some sort of audio video evidence of what occurred. If that were to emerge or any other facts were to emerge, or frankly, if questions here aren't answered, uh, there's no video of him leaving that facility. Uh, there's going to be a big problem. The Saudis have denied any involvement with Khashoggi's disappearance. Meg Oliver, CBS News, New York. Yesterday, the Trump campaign announced they will be coming to Missoula this coming Thursday, October 18th at 6.30 p.m. The rally will be held at Neptune Aviation Services. This will be the fourth rally that President Trump has held in Montana and the first rally in Missoula since he first began his race for president in June 2015. Back here in Montana, a man who was bow hunting near Livingston yesterday was attacked by a grizzly bear. He is now recovering at a hospital in Bozeman. Just to warn you, the images you are about to see might be considered a little graphic. Bob Ligasa and his hunting partner Greg are from Idaho and have been hunting in this certain area for 10 years. They were approaching some elk when a sow grizzly and her cub surprised them from about 12 yards away. Ligasa said he did not have enough time to reach for his bear spray. She dropped me on my butt, and I was, you know, basically kind of fighting for my life with my arms and kicking and, you know, pushing away as she was, you know, trying to get closer. And then luckily, uh, Greg was able to react so quickly and get his bear spray out and spray the bear to stop any sort of damage. Because if it would have been, I think, any more than two or three seconds, I think I would have been um, a lot more chewed up. He's really lucky. In Great Falls, a former Maelstrom Air Force Base commander recently spoke with civic leaders about the importance of upgrading the Minuteman missiles. Retired General Tom Deppe says the military is long overdue in motorizing the land-based missile system. The Air Force is currently working on the ground-based strategic deterrent, which will replace the Minuteman. And one year ago, the Air Force awarded contracts to Boeing Company and Northrop Grumman Systems Corporation. Depe says the upgrade will not only boost to the, the local economy, but it will secure our, our deterrence. It is the last resort. It's the backstop of everything else. Our national security policy is based on and for years it was somewhat overlooked because we had Iraq, we had other, other things going on and we still do but there comes a point where you've got to belly up to the bar and realize that you know we've got to maintain this because it is the most important mission we have. We were told it will be another two years before the final contract is picked up and several more years for work to begin. It's estimated close to 15,000 suffer from diabetes in Yellowstone County. Some of those had a chance today to get some support in dealing with the disease.
The 406 Diabetes Walk was moved indoors to the old Herbergers at the Rimrock Mall after being postponed two weeks ago because of the weather. The event gives families and those with diabetes a chance to talk with experts and other patients. Diabetes advocate and event organizer Leif Walhaven says diabetes patients can live a normal life if, the, if they monitor blood sugar levels closely and take insulin. With today's technology and education and health care, people will live to be a ripe old age. With diabetes, they just have to learn how to manage it. And the difficult part, especially for the little kids, is you have to manage it every day. My son is 23 now. He was diagnosed at age 10. And so he'll have to, he gives himself shots of insulin. He gives himself three to four shots a day, and he'll do that for the rest of his life. Part of the money raised goes to help children attend the diabetes camp at Beartooth Mountain Christian Ranch outside of Columbus. Tails were wagging this weekend when five of eight pit bull rescues had the first chance to see each other after being adopted out of the Humane Society in the summer. The pit bulls all came from cruelty cases but easily found loving homes here in Montana. MTN's Dona Lakatua was there and has the story. Four months ago, eight pit bulls were delivered to Montana after being rescued from a dog fighting case. The young dogs were all adopted to loving families and had their first reunion since adoption at the Humane Society Saturday the 13th. The so-called pity party was a celebration of the success and life of these wonderful canines. It's exciting to see these guys here. Um, I know the staff is really excited. We, When they came in in June, um, everyone was just waiting for the truck to arrive and really excited. Hi, pretty girl. And um, it, it's really exciting to see them all together. They all have homes. Um, and so the family, the adopter families, to get together and talk about challenges and success stories is really rewarding to see. Oh, it's joyful. I, it's, I have a sheer sense of joy in watching them. They've grown so much since I saw them get off the truck. They're so happy and uh, have loving families. It's fantastic to see them again. So happy, you know. Jessie Walrath adopted Gracie May, a mature pit bull with slightly lower energy than all her peers. Walra says it was love at first sight. Humane Society has a sleepover program, so Gracie was just going to come and spend the night. And then it was, maybe we can keep her another night, and she never went home. We, we kept her forever, <laughs> or she kept us. So, and I had seen the, the video of everyone arriving from the ASPCA and just fell in love with the dogs and their stories. Despite their upbringing, none of the dogs are violent, or what is called dog aggressive and owners are standing up to the stigma against pit bull terriers. I just think it's really important to, to remember that at the Humane Society we don't discriminate against any breeds and we just treat every dog as an individual. To always give pit bulls a chance. They are very loving, very sweet, and uh, they should always be given a chance, as should every dog. It's wonderful to see the happy, healthy pups finding forever homes. In Missoula, Donalakatua, MTN News. Donald says the Humane Society and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals helped find the homes for these eight dogs. Still to come tonight on the 10 o'clock news, a Montana sheep ranch buttoning up with a new look by launching its very own clothing line. Later in sports, what is going on with the Grizz? Bobby Houck offers an explanation after back-to-back head-scratching losses. You're watching MTN News with Zoe Zandora, Storm Tracker Weather with Connor Pregitzer, and Sports with Casey Conlon. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.